May the Lord be with you and strengthen you, dear heart dwellers. And the rosary that we prayed last, and she began speaking, My children, I want you all to make a concerted effort to pray for those who have not prepared for their death. I want this agenda to be on your heart and mind every day as you go about your work. And then she was speaking to me. I need this to be your agenda daily. I need you to put out messages addressing this and even helping them with the things they need to repent of. And I always find myself in that. And how to approach their relatives. Let this be your focus intensely for this coming week. They need to understand that they are entering the end times and the things that are being allowed are permitted to wake them up so they will all consider their death. Make it clear that the Lord did not send these, but he permitted them because they were far too caught up in the world and have neglected their souls and eternal destiny. And it is true that these things are written and planned before this time in order to wake souls up. When she said that, I was thinking about what the Lord said. There'll be wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, plagues. She continued, That is why the events in the world and on this earth are becoming closer together, like the pangs of a woman in labor. Because he is waking all of you up, Time is short. No one knows the hour or the day. Yet the labor pains increase in frequency. And then she was smiling and she said, I am so happy to see that brother praying the rosary. This means a great deal to me. Please tell him and also that I am with him and I will help to prepare him for my son. He is very pleasing to me and to heaven. Yes, we do look in on you, dear ones. Yes, we do read the thoughts of your mind and the feelings of your heart. And great indeed is the importance of the disposition of your heart. All of you who are called to be heart dwellers are peacemakers, repairing the breach between Christian sects. I wish to be recognized as the mother of Christians who are so dear to me that I was willing to give up my only son to suffer a terrible death to open heaven for you all. Even those who hate and oppose us, even those who have pledged their allegiance to Satan, they are deeply wounded who did not find their solace in my son's arms, so Satan drew them into his. What is not understood by those in covens is that Satan was the one who inspired the abuse and damaged them, turning them bitter. Then he came and offered himself as the savior. This is the same tactic he uses to inspire world leaders to influence the masses, create chaos by causing a terrific suffering and death, blaming it on another, then rush in and offer comfort as if they were innocent and the other party was responsible. Boy, we see this over and over again. This was with COVID as well. The vaccine was not created for COVID. COVID was created for the vaccine. So they send a plague and they offer a solution. Unfortunately, the solution is worse than the plague. She continued, Do you understand, little ones who follow the devil, he set you up to be hurt and then offered you comfort. I pray for you daily that you will see this before it is too late because in time he will abandon you and torture you and laugh at you for believing him. So I pray because I love you, because my son loves you and wants you to be in heaven with him forever. Please, my children, prepare your hearts to pray for those who are unprepared for their death. I ask you to dedicate this coming week to that end. In your messages on your own channels, bring this forth. I am your mother of mercy, 
and I love each of you dearly, and am so pleased with the disposition of your hearts during this rosary. I will indeed draw you closer to my son. And that was the end of her message. And what is so beautiful about Mary is that she's only concerned for her son, that he gets the glory and that he gets the bride that he deserves. And that's why God has given her the graces through the Holy Spirit to address us at times and straighten out our crooked ways, to encourage us to long for the Lord and to follow after him. She's made a huge difference in my walk. And there's only one thing between those who don't believe in the intercession of Our Lady and us who do believe. There's only one thing. And I still haven't been able to find that thing in the scriptures. The one hang-up is that the saints cannot hear us asking for prayer in heaven. They cannot hear us asking for intercession. Our pastor can hear us when we call him on the phone. You can hear us when we put out a message to pray. But people insist that heaven can't hear. And they also insist that those in heaven cannot pray for us. And yet Jesus is praying for us in heaven, and we imitate Jesus at all times. And what is this about the saints cheering us on? If they couldn't hear us, they wouldn't be cheering us on. So that's a direct contradiction. And let me ask you a question. If you're sitting at your kid's baseball game, and all of a sudden he's up to bat, and you want to make sure he gets it good, do you just cheer him on, or do you pray? Of course, you pray. Holy Spirit, help him hit that ball. So while they're cheering us on in heaven, they're also praying for us. And no one to this day has been able to give me any proof that that isn't a solid reality. Everything, in fact, points to it that that's exactly the way it works. Those in heaven, the great cloud, looking in on us, are praying for us. And it's through the instrumentality of the Holy Spirit that they're able to distinguish what our needs and our prayers are and who's praying for them when. Guys, the graces in heaven are tremendous and limitless. We have no concept. When they say there's no time in heaven, wow, the implications of that are endless because of the dimensions that exist in heaven. But what I want to say is the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He runs through everyone. And any time anyone speaks to a saint, the Holy Spirit makes them aware of it. And Mary was so faithful with the graces that she was given to raise Jesus, that she's given more authority in heaven and more power in heaven as an intercessor. Just like we would go to someone like Benny Hinn or just like we would go and ask them to pray for us. She is his mother. <laughs> she certainly has his ear. And he is so pleased with her. She is a highly favored one, as Scripture says. So uh, don't let that bother you, please. And if you've got any more qualms about it, do me a favor and listen to the eight-part series on what the scriptures say about Mary's role in the church. I'll tell you one, give you one hint right now, and that is that the wedding in Cana, bottom line, did Jesus know that the bride and groom ran out of wine? God, did God know that? <laughs> of course he knew. Did he do anything about it? No, not until his mother came and interceded for the bridal couple. Then he did do something about it. He performed his first public miracle out of season. So there's a hint. The Lord bless you, dear ones. Please, please pray for those who are not ready. We all have so many relatives who are not ready. Pray for them and be careful how you present 
the truth so that you don't alienate them. Do your best. Do your best to help them recognize that someday they're going to die and they're going to be ready to cross over and what's going to happen then. God bless you all. I'm praying for you. Pray for us, please. And pray for the Satanists who are persecuting us. Thank you. No matter how they persecute us, we want to see them in heaven with us. And that is the cry of our heart. Lord, save our enemies.